enjoy your friends and enjoy whoever walks in. <laughs> but I'll miss you so much. I know, I'll miss I'll you. I'll miss too. you so much. Think about you first here. Yeah. Okay. Come on. I am heartbroken for Whitney and it's nice to see that Catherine is there for Whitney to try and sort of uplift her at one of the lowest points in in, in her, her experience in the villa. I think um i don't think maybe going home was the best idea when it comes to whitney personally i know viewers have their own opinion i will explain why later but i don't think that was the best um to send maddie home mal going home i'm not surprised because if it wasn't mal then it was going to be leah the other girls are more popular than them too so i'm not surprised that she went home but hey it is what it is hey there it's valerie welcome back if you're new here don't forget to subscribe Leave a like, a comment, and turn on the notification bell for when I upload new videos. In this episode, I'll be reviewing Love Island, Season 10, Episode 23. So the Islanders wake up and go for debriefing. Obviously, <laughs> Ty is still on cloud nine because he's now closed off. Ella's still excited. I love Leah. Leah said, I can't believe that Ty suddenly closed off. And I don't know. We'll see what happens. Let them send in a bombshell. Let them send in... Let them bring on Kasamo, and then I'll truly believe that Ty is a changed man. But for now, I've got my eye on him. Um, and then I love the fact that he was Ty was able to speak to Maddie and tell him that Whitney actually likes you more than you think she does. It, she tells everybody she likes you, but I think when she's with you, she doesn't want you to know. So I think it's something worth bearing in mind, whatever conversations you're having with her. Because I think everybody can see that the communication, yes, they started off with very good communication, but somehow something has gone wrong with sort of Maddie and um, Whitney and they can't seem to sort of understand each other. Everyone wants to be right and I don't know what will happen next. Um, on her part, Whitney is sort of saying, you know, she's going to stand her ground. She is not going to give in, so they wait and see. And then Ty and Zachariah, Obviously, he's still reeling from the fact that um, Katie pied him. <laughs> uh, they decide they're going to make breakfast for the girls. When Katie's asked, she said, well, she was surprised you already wanted to kiss her on day two, given that you should have still been grieving for Molly. And this is what I said, that Zach is quick to move on. He doesn't care. And Katie's right to sort of hold back because she doesn't really need the attention. She's already had attention the first time around. And I think she's just building on whatever momentum she has. So she doesn't need Zachariah kissing her to sort of give her clout. I think her pieing him gives her more clout than had she kissed him. Um, so Zachariah and Ty make breakfast. Obviously, Ty says he's not a good cook. So I assume he was all he did was mash the avocados and Ty cooked the eggs. Ella and um Katie were very impressed, although Katie called Zach Scott, which hurt his ego, but hey, it is what it is. And everybody was sort of sitting around and just watching them and it's like, oh, okay. I think Katie is enjoying the attention she's getting from Zach. And I think her calling Zach might have been a slip of the tongue, but I think she's really relishing in the idea that he's squirming, he's really trying to work very hard to get her attention. And I don't know whether she really likes him as well. I think because Ty closed himself off, that's a given. And I don't think she would want to pursue Scott, given the fact that Scott has told Catherine that his focus is only on her. So I think she's going to drag Zachariah for as long as she can so that she can stay in the villa. Uh, whether he is going to continue to put up with the with whatever she's, she's dishing out, that's a different story. I think if a bombshell comes in that he likes, he might end up leaving KD and going for the bombshell because he's quick to move on. So the Islanders receive a text message that it's time for the kissing challenge and everyone is as excited. <laughs> uh, well, maybe not, I don't think as much because he's already been in trouble for kissing way more girls than he should have during the dancing, the, the heart rate challenge. Anyway, um, was I surprised with some of the results? Yes. I was. Uh, KD, I didn't expect her to kiss anyone, so her getting the lowest score was, was, was nothing for me. And Ella, because she's so loyal to Ty, it was always going to be that she was going to be the lowest, you know, one of the lowest kisses anyway. Um, Whitney, I think people like Zach underscored Whitney because he actually held on to Whitney and I think he should have given her higher marks. I Maybe I'm biased about Whitney. Catherine, I was surprised Scott didn't kick off because she was number two um, I think she was number two with Mal in the kissing chat. Yeah, she was number two. Um, and Leah, Leah, I think 
the, the, the reason why she might have got the lower scores was because she went first and Jess was the highest scorer and it's like, mm, okay, it is what it is. It's like a raya. Oh, you could feel the, the, the lip filler and it's just like, why? Why? Uh, all the girls were unhappy with Mitch. They said Mitch was the worst kisser and it's sad. At least they didn't, you know, grill, go on and on. They did complain about the fact that it was all teeth. I don't know what he was doing with his teeth and I don't know what his teeth have to do with the kiss, but hey, it is what it is. So the thing that surprised me is the boys didn't kiss the girls. The girls didn't stand in a, in a line for the boys to come and kiss them. And I don't know whether that's because the producers don't want to get Ty in trouble because obviously um when the girls kissed it wasn't his fault but when it rolls were reversed i think had he gone in for a kiss ella would have kicked off so i don't know whether that's because they didn't want to cause chaos for the boys or what they were doing but the boys didn't get that opportunity everyone then after you know discussing the kisses goes and gets ready for the night and it's nice to see whitney and Maddie in a good place they're chatting about you know eating takeaway in bed and you know, they seem to have recovered from whatever issues they had. I think it could be partly because of the conversation that Ty had with Medi, and I think Medi has realized that Whitney is really into him. So it's nice to see them talking about. When they talk Whitney and Medi, they do talk about a lot of things. They talk about life outside the villa. They talk about life in the villa. It's not always, oh, you look cute, you look cute, or do you, do you fancy me? Do you? No, they were talking about, you know, having takeaway in bed and Medi was saying, if you do take eat takeaway in bed, I'll bull storm off. I wish they'd given us footage of Medi and Whitney just reading the Islanders, but we don't seem to get anything. I don't know. We'll see. Jess then goes for a chat with Sammy and I don't know why. This guy has been saying horrible stuff. He was telling Mal that he enjoyed the case and he really felt aroused by it. So I don't know why Jess is even entertaining him. I don't get it. I really feel some type of way because um so Jess pulled Sammy for a chat. I don't know why nobody's telling her that Sammy is not feeling her. Sammy's using her as a backup plan in case Mal goes home. So she pulls him for a chat and tells him, Oh, you know, I'm not feeling anything with Mitch. I still want to get to know you. I still am interested in you. And he says, Well, Mal and I are in a good place. And Sammy's like, Oh, uh, I'm still open, but I need time to think about it. And it's like, What do you need time for? You were saying Jess is not your type. You said you know you had to work extra hard to sort of start to sort of build a connection with her. And now you're with Mel. You say you're happy with Mel. You're happy with where things are going. Why would you want to keep Jess on a string and just drag her along with you, knowing that you're not fully invested in her? I wish the guys would be honest with Jess. I wish they would tell her all the things Sammy said. That way she stops wasting her time. I know Mitch might not be it. Mitch hasn't found his person. I don't know why the producers haven't brought in a person for him but i wish you tell they would tell just the truth so then just goes to speak to mitch and sort of breaks things off and tells him that i'm not feeling it romantically so i just want us to stay as friends he is thinking oh maybe you should have given it a day and it's like mm, i really don't think so um but i think she should have given it a day as well and not run to sammy to after the kissing challenge to see how sammy behaved i think him giving her a high score sort of gave her the impression that he really liked her but i don't think that's it uh, and then you have catherine and whitney having a chat with with uh Medi, sort of telling him about going double dating once they left the villa and all everything that they're going to do and it's so sweet this is what i said i like about Medi and whitney's conversations that they're not just about oh you look pretty how do you feel about me do you want to talk to somebody else this so i liked that bit and then just calls the girls and starts telling them about her chat with Sammy and I'm like the girls need to tell her the truth they need to tell her that the problem is there's no other guy she can go for the only other person is Montel and Montel is in a coupling with Leah unless Leah goes home and Montel stays she's sort of stuck in between Sammy and Mitch and if she doesn't pick one of them she's going to go home I think she should have stayed with me she should have told him I want us to be friends but let's continue to to keep going and hopefully some something will come up if nothing comes up that's fine if something comes up that's fine i think she shouldn't have broken things off with mitch that's just the impression that i'm getting because sammy is going to get desperate and it's going to come to her until they get to casa more and then he's going to dump her again and then she's going to be left with nothing to hold on to but they that's just me the uh katie then receives a message for the islanders to gather around the fire pit for, at the fire pit it's revealed that um 
the, the public have been voting for their favorite uh, islander, a boy and a girl, and um, the the person with the least votes would be going home. And so was I surprised that Mal went home? No. Had it not been Mal, then it would have been uh, Leah. That's the impression that I get. And also, I was definitely surprised that Medi went home. I think the viewers were short-sighted in choosing Medi to be the lowest vote. I think, yes, people were upset with the way that he was talking to Whitney, but I think this their scenes were edited in a way to make him seem like he was the villain in that relationship. Yes, some of the things we said were wrong, but we only got a few snippets of the conversation. We didn't get the full conversation. And Whitney was heartbroken. You could see even Catherine, the way she ran across to sort of hug Medi. Medi was loved by all the islanders. So there must have been something very good about him. I wish people had, had kept him in. Personally, I would have preferred Sammy to go home. Mitch is terrible, but I would rather Mitch stays in the villa because of the chaos and drama he brings in. Um, and so I like the fact that Medi actually sat down with Whitney before he packed his stuff to sort of have a conversation with her and tell her that she needs to, yes, she's upset that he's going, but she needs to prioritize herself because he knows she'll need to create a connection with someone. He knows she needs to be in a couple in order to survive and stay in the villa. And he knows what she will benefit from staying in the villa. This is why I was saying initially at the start of their connection or their relationship, I said that Mehdi has an idea of how he wants to portray himself in the villa and he has an image he wants to uphold. And so as he grew connected to Whitney, I think this is what he was trying to build them up to and during the conversation with Whitney I think this is what he was trying to make her realize that yes he might be gone yes she might be upset that he's gone but the benefits of her staying in the villa far outweigh her mourning his departure and I like the fact that she was saying to him am I invited to to France I think she meant is he inviting her sort of like whether as in a relationship or as a friend um and he said, of course, I think he really likes her, but I think he also understands the fact that she needs to be in a couple in order to survive and stay in the villa. She is heartbroken. I think it's going to take time for her to move on. I hope the producers bring in someone that's Whitney's type so that she can stay in the villa or else we need to get rid of Leah. But it seems like if we get rid of Leah, if Sammy and Jeff doesn't, don't work out, Jess is going to be interested in, in Montel, so I don't know what's going to happen to my poor Whitney. I hope one of the guys couples up with her. I like the fact that um, Medi asked the other guys in the villa to say, please make sure you look after Whitney, because he knew it was going to be very hard for her. She wasn't even involved in sort of mal getting packed and stuff, because she was just trying to process the fact that Medi was gone. And Catherine speaking to her and trying to console her, that was one of the sweetest things ever, because... In these shows, I understand, they, especially in dating shows, the girls create a bond, yes, with their partner, but they also create bonds with other islanders and live with very good friendships. So it's nice to see that Whitney has someone rooting for her in Catherine, someone who really loves her and is there to uplift her at one of her lowest points. So I really loved that for them. Um, Sammy had a conversation with Mel. Sammy was upset because Sammy was not interested in Jess. He was going to continue with Mel up until the end or for as long as he could, as long as it kept him in the villa because I think he really doesn't like Jess. I think Jess is his ticket in the villa, but he's using her for that. But he, in a romantic sense, I think he liked Mel. Mel seemed okay with it. She seemed okay with going home, but you could see Sammy was heartbroken as well. Um, I don't know. I felt it was brutal and I don't understand why this time they didn't get the islanders to decide who goes home and who stays I don't know why they felt the need to sort of say that you know this is the person with the lowest votes and that's it um I don't know whether it's because it was people that are not their favorites or it was because of the backlash last time when they sort of got the islanders to decide and the viewers were complaining but hey it is what it is anyway thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe bye everyone